this is an oboe, and uh, and this this of course is its larger brother, the English horn. There are two other oboes in the family. There's an oboe de more, or uh, oboe de jour, and uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's uh, it looks like a, an English horn, only smaller. It's in the key of A, in between the oboe and the English horn. The English horn is in F. And then there's a, a baritone or a bass oboe, which is uh, full octave lower than the <coughs> oboe, um, which looks like a large English horn. I did a television show um, uh, back in the 70s called Little House on the Prairie uh, with David Rose, who was a wonderful, wonderful uh, uh, television composer. and and. Um, uh, he wrote an awful lot of stuff for me, you know, uh, and we always had holiday parties. Uh, and Michael Landon came to one; it was at one of those parties, and he came up to me and he said, "You know, as long as they're crying and dying, you'll be working." <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the the problem with the oboe is um, not running out of air. You don't run out of air on the oboe. Uh, you, there's, you know, the, the bore at the top of this instrument is less than half the diameter of a cigarette. It's very tiny. So you're, you can't put a huge amount of air through the instrument, but you have to move it through the instrument at very fast. So it takes a lot of pressure. Um, but so you don't run out of air. You have to exhale before you inhale. I, look, I'll show you a good example. This is. This is Tchaikovsky 4, second movement. Since he just passed away, this is a great thing. There was uh, George Martin. Uh, George Martin was an oboe player, um, uh, and um, uh, he did a. He was. They brought him in. This is. Oh, I don't know what year this was, but it was a. There was a group you probably heard of called America, and they didn't ever quite get to superstardom, you know. And so they wanted to try to make. Make uh, he have him come in and do, do an album, which he did, and and it's they still didn't make it. But there was one little kind of ordinary. It's a pretty little ballad uh, that's on that on that thing, and his arrangement of this is amazing because um, uh, it's first of all oboe. You'll hear the oboe in solo, uh, and then you'll also hear it as the lead voice of a wind wind section. It's a woodwind choir. Um, uh, and with, I, I don't know, there were, I think, four cellos, but no other strings. And it's, it's just woodwinds and horn. And um, uh, it's, it's a lovely little three-minute piece instrument. And I will tell you, on, particularly on television calls years ago, uh, uh, there were times when I had an oboe part that I put on English horn. Because uh, I, the minute I, I heard the part, I knew that the English horn was a better voice for the for it, and and <laughs> I would say probably fifty percent of the time the leader didn't even know <laughs> that I had done it. Just made an executive decision. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's exactly right. Is that just because of the range? Being... Not necessarily the range, but just the whole, uh, just the tanner of the of the. Of the uh, of the cue itself, you know, the color, what what I might have been blending with, and that kind of thing, you know. So, because the English horn is a is a much more, uh, um, uh, it's a much more blended sounding instrument. It blends in much better. Yes, as you go down the oboe family, 
it, they, the oboe, the oboe being the soprano voice, there actually is, is an E-flat oboe, which is, uh, there is one of those in town, and I highly recommend against writing for it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a frightening little thing, and, and um, you know, not, not I, I just wouldn't do it. Um, it doesn't really give you much that the oboe, the oboe can't. I mean, the oboe is, is um, very capable of, you know, that's a double C. So um, uh, you can, I, I wouldn't write that <laughs> unless you know who you're writing it for. Um, but hey, uh, he just, just a lot of double C's. Yeah, but, uh, <laughs> this comes out. But, um, um, uh, you know, the, so the oboe being the soprano voice, uh, if you wanted to use the demore, uh, Claire Fisher did a piece um, years ago for the Double Reed Society. He wrote these two, two little pieces called Bachludes that were for Double Reed's choir, oboe, oboe and bassoon, oboe, and he used all the voices. He used uh, um, oboe, oboe de more, English horn, baritone oboe, bassoon, and contra. And um, wow. uh, I had those scores and somehow managed to lose them, and uh, he never kept a copy of them, and it could kill me because they were beautiful little pieces. But... Yes. You started to say that the, the bass bridge. oboe bridges between two instruments. It's, oh yes, the, it's the color bridge between the oboe and the bassoon family. Oh. So it goes from the soprano, the oboe, then the demore, then the English horn, then the baritone oboe. Then um, technically there's a, an instrument called a tenoroon, which is a small bassoon in F uh, that, that uh, I don't know anybody has one of those. And, um, and then the bassoon and, and of course the contra. This is this is from Scheherazade. Mm -hmm. That's a low B. It's a low B. <laughs> you know. Uh, so, Earl, I my my question is, how good would that sound on the English horn? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That might even sound fuller and rounder. Even. It'll. It's mm -hmm. definitely a different sound now. And it, same, and notes. It. same notes. Same yeah. notes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> had it right the first time. Yeah, yeah he did. Uh, I mean, because you're, you're talking about this is the princess, you know. Uh, I have refused to play when an, when an engineer insists on putting a microphone down here, close to the bell, because all the highs in the sound are there. That's where all the highs are. The darkness, the, the warmth of the sound is up in this part of the instrument. So, the guys that um, the guys that mic close, you know, rather than a room mic. Um, uh, the the best guy in the record business is a guy that's been around forever, a guy named Al Schmidt. Yeah. And Al Al knows exactly what he's doing. You know, you walk into a room, the mics are set up. He's walking around saying hi to everybody. You need to check anything? No, nope, let's go. You know, and and it all. And where, does he, and where does he put it? The 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 best place if you want to get close is about here. Oh. About Almost where here. that microphone is right now. <clears throat> Pretty much. Yeah. Um, and here again, that's if that's not the microphone that you would use for an open. <laughs> I would prefer not. No, <laughs> my preference would be a Neumann U87 or 80, mm -hmm. uh, 67 rather, which is a tube old tube mic. Mm -hmm. um, also, the depends and important to know, gang. And, and I will do this. Yeah. I will do this intentionally. You know, I let them place the mic. Then I use the instrument. The more straight on I get to the microphone this way, the brighter the sound will be on tape. And the more I get to the side of the instrument, so I, you know, I may check if I have a lot to play on something. I may go and listen to a playback. And hear how I what what's what they're getting, and then and then adjust my position, but not say anything, that, you know, to them. But but there is definitely a difference if I play. So, 
it's oh. it's just um, um, you know that but that's that's the best working place if it gets a little closer you may get some key noise, key noise. and you can also get me going <coughs> letting air out yes